Okay, this is the TCEQ microbial reporting form. You can see up here in the middle at the top, TCEQ form 10525, and below that, 08 of 2017. This is the most recent revision of the form. As I indicated earlier, you may have a customized form given to you by your laboratory that you may use. Um, in order for them to use that, they have to have it pre-approved by us. And it will generally include filling in this top right-hand portion um, with their name and contact information, accreditation seal, and their laboratory ID number. Otherwise, the fields are generally the same. Um, and what I'm about to show you will apply to those. As I indicated, they have to have this approved by us and it must have the same minimum fields and general location to help you guys be able to complete it more consistently. So we're gonna go ahead and do our example on the generic form. And we're gonna start with section one. Section one is in this top left-hand corner and it's going to include your public water system ID number, your public water system name, and your county. So the public water system ID number is your seven digit unique ID number that is assigned to you and only your water system. It's important to include all seven digits, including any preceding zeros. This number is unique to you and only you so that any data that comes from this, any results that come from this are automatically associated to just your water system. For this example, we're going to use our generic ID one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. As you can see, we're doing all of our additions in ink, either black or blue. And we are being careful to write clearly, legibly, leave a little bit of space in between because anything you put on this form, the laboratory will also have to enter into their computer system so that it can be associated to us through online data migration and end up in SIDWIS to give you credit. The next item will be your public water system name. For this, we are using the city of test. This public water system ID number is going to be reflective of your county, the first three digits. The digits one, two, three reflect Jefferson County, which is where the city of test is located. Section number two is this next large box. As you can see from the side, it says report results to, and that's what we're gonna include. We're gonna include the name, address, and contact information for those who we'd like the reports to go to. If the official reports go to the city manager, the mayor, the um, board president, the owner, that's the information that you would include in this top section. In this case, we're going to put in the mayor of the city of test. All of his correspondence goes to City Hall, which is located at 321 Main Street. In the city of test, the state of Texas, Now these phone numbers are important. You can include the official phone number to reach Mr. Joe Smith in phone item number one, but really these two contacts are to ensure if the laboratory needs to ask questions about the form or to report a positive, they have people to contact. Therefore, please ensure that these are good, valid phone numbers for reaching people at your water system. So I'm including the main line for Public Works and my cell phone number as the sampler. Either way, these should be good phone numbers where the water system can be reached about the samples that we're about to submit through this form. Okay, now we're on to section three. That's gonna be this box here, and it's gonna include information about the sampler. It's gonna ask for the sampler name. In any community system, any non-transient, non-community system, the rules of the TCEQ require that bacteriological samples be taken by a licensed water operator. If by any chance you take samples for a transient, non-community system, the requirement for an operating license 
may not apply to you. In my case, I am a licensed operator and I collected these samples. So I'll be entering in my information. With my license number. I am not the owner of the water system. I am an operator on behalf of the city. And then there's this other column. If by any chance you are a volunteer, if you're a concerned citizen, if you are taking this sample in a capacity other than owner or operator, please indicate how you, and in what capacity in this other section. Show my representation that I did this. I will include my signature in the box right next to my name. Okay, now this next section is going to be where the meat it sits. This is going to be where the proof is in the pudding, and these are our samples. So uh, on this sampling event, I collected two samples. One sample from City Hall, and one sample from our well one. So we'll start with the sample from City Hall. At the time I was taking the samples, I marked the bare minimum requirements of where I took it, when I took it, and what my chlorine residual were. I'm going to use a lot of that information here while filling out the form. So this City Hall sample is going to be something that was taken to comply with our regular RTCR requirements, or what you would call a routine water sample. In this first column, you can see that we're looking for the sample identification or the location. Here it also instructs you to use the specific address or the location identified in the sample siting plan. If I wrote City Hall, there are a lot of City Halls in the state of Texas. That is not a specific location. Instead, I'm going to use the actual address, 321 Main. The same thing goes if you were to collect the sample from the library or the elementary school or Mrs. Johnson's house. Please include the actual location. As I mentioned, our intent is for it to be used for a regular compliance sample. This next box you see is for sample type. Regular compliance or routine is this routine or distribution column at the beginning. If by any chance we were taking this sample as a repeat, we would mark the second column. If we're taking a raw water sample for either triggered source or assessment source monitoring, we would use, we would use the raw sample column in the middle. And then these final two on the end are for non-compliant samples. You'll even see we have a specific note here at the bottom. The asterisk indicates that special and construction samples are not for compliance. If you're taking a special, that would be something that you would do for your own information. Um, say you need to lift a boil water notice, or um, you've done some work in a part of town and you want to know what kind of uh, condition it's in, whether it's returned to normal operating conditions. Also, are you doing a tie-in? Is there construction in the area? Do you want to make sure that construction is not causing negative impacts on your system? These are the two items you could use those last columns for. Now we're going to also reflect our date and time. This was taken on the August 4th, 20. And we took it first thing in the morning on our way to the well at 8.20 a.m. This sample is not a replacement. If I were to need a replacement, that would be, say, if I had taken a sample on August 3rd and I had broken it. When it got to the laboratory, it was in leaking condition. Or um, I had incidentally overflowed it and they couldn't shake it. They needed to reject it from the lab. Then I would mark replacement and the ID of the sample from the third that was rejected. Neither of those apply in this case. We also need to indicate that we followed protocol and ensured we had adequate chlorine residual at the time of sampling. In this case, I sampled and obtained 91, 0.91 milligrams per liter. The city of test chloraminates their system, so I used a total test kit to obtain that number. That is how to enter a routine sample for the revised total coliform rule. As you can see, this line follows all the way across. 
and all of the reject codes, results that this that the laboratory does, and then its unique laboratory ID number that will follow it all the way from this form through the laboratory to the reporting and eventually end up in SIDWIS goes in this far right-hand column. These areas that are gray will all be filled out by the laboratory. You don't need to put anything into these areas. All right, let's do another example. This is a sample taken from well number one. As you can see under sample identification location, there's also information here about raw wells. We don't want to write well one, which is the colloquial, colloquial name that we use at the city of test. Instead, we're going to use the source ID code for the well. In this case, it gives you the example of 1234567A. Surprise, our test location is G1234567A, which is the TCEQ's name for our well number one. As I indicated, this is a raw water sample taken from our well prior to chlorination. This raw water sample was taken because we have a sanitary control easement exception, and this is required by our exception for the TROT team, the Technical Review and Oversight team. It's something we're taking all the time. It is not being triggered. Therefore, we do not need to worry about this column related to triggered raw samples. If by any chance we had a positive which required this to be taken and it was triggered, we would mark the ID of the originating positive here. Now we indicate our collection information. This one was also taken on the 4th, and it was taken about 10 minutes later when we got to the well field and had finished flushing. We also checked the chlorine residual to make sure that we were getting a raw sample without chlorination and received a zero milligram per liter result, and once again, tested with a total chlorine test kit. Same thing, all of the results associated to this will be on the same line, and the ID number that the lab assigns will follow this bottle all the way through the process through reporting to Drinking Water Watch. This is how you would complete sampling documentation for routine and raw samples. Now, some people ask, what happens once I hand this off to the laboratory? A couple of important things. Before you leave the laboratory, double check this form with the laboratory personnel. When you're ready to hand this over to the laboratory, you, as the sampler, will sign in the relinquish by column and give the date and time that you handled the sample, handed the sample over. I took these at 8.30 and I, had a, I, I drew, drove right to the laboratory and got them there at 9 o'clock. I did not hand them to a courier, so I will not need either of these lines. Instead, the lab will receive and sign in this grade line. The lab will also check to make sure whether I iced it, whether it was an acceptable temperature, and provide any other additional comments. As they process the sample, they will also let me know if any, for any reason it was rejected, if the chlorine residual test came up present or absent, and whether the sample tested positive or present or absent for total coliform or E. coli. Those results will be reported in the lab results section, along with the method by which they tested. They would also note the beginning and ending time of analysis. Bear in mind that the time you fill in here as the time you collected has to be in the past. You cannot sample in the future, so be careful of the dates that you include. Make sure that they are accurate and double check with the laboratory prior to relinquishing to the lab. Also, in order for the testing over here to be valid, the sample must be tested within 30 hours of collection. So be careful to ensure that you get those bacteriological samples to the lab as quickly as possible to make sure they have time to process them before those 30 hours have come and gone. So once it's read, they started it, they finished it, they wrote down all that information, all those results come through, and this will be sent back to us at the TCEQ through electronic data reporting. Couple of words of wisdom and potential caution. If you are submitting samples for compliance, so routine 
repeat, or raw samples. The compliance samples without a chlorine residual measured in the field at the time of collection will be rejected. This is a requirement of the Texas Administrative Code and the program area's Quality Assurance Project Plan. Likewise, this form will not be accepted if there is not a signature from the sampler and a relinquishment from the sampler. Finally, double check everything on the form to ensure that it is complete and accurate before you hand it over to the laboratory. And I want to make sure you understand this portion. Labs are not authorized to make changes to the form under any circumstances. Only the TCEQ can authorize changes after the MRF is submitted to the lab or after analysis is complete. If by any chance you realize after the fact that you've had problems with your form, please reach out to us immediately. If needed, we can coordinate with your lab, but the lab cannot make the changes without our coordination. In some areas, we are completely unable to make the change. Hopefully, this gives you a good idea of how to complete the form, what fields are required, what should go into those fields, and briefly, what the form means and its importance.